We're very lucky in Rhode Island to have all through state government really good people working on behalf of the citizens of Rhode Island every day. And one example of this is our effort to get $1.9 million in federal money for a sustainable communities grant. And I look forward to sharing with you the good work that's happening with this federal money. Hello, I'm Kevin Flynn. I'm the Associate Director for the Rhode Island Division of Planning. I'm here to give you a brief introduction into an important new initiative underway within the Division of Planning, the preparation of the state's regional plan for sustainable development. This is a three-year effort funded by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development and local partners. It's a significant undertaking, one that, if we are successful, will fundamentally alter how we look at and plan for economic development in Rhode Island, and how this effort, so important to our state's future, will also address such issues as transportation, housing, places where our state should grow in the future, technical assistance and capacity building for local government, and social equity. In short, how the state's quality in life can improve in the years ahead. This is a presentation made to the state's Economic Development Corporation Board of Directors on December 17th. Before I get into the main topic, I want to back up a little bit and give you a little bit of background into the statewide planning program and where we exist in state government. Our mission is to prepare, maintain, and implement plans for the physical, economic, and social development of the state. The State Planning Council consists of the governor, the governor's policy director, the state's budget officer, the directors of departments of administration, health, transportation, and the Economic Development Corporation, several representatives of the Rhode Island League of Cities and Towns, nonprofit and environmental advocates, and as well as the Providence Planning Director. The staff of the statewide planning program is 24 full-time positions, and we are organized into five sections. Uh, we also include the Office of Housing and Community Development and the Water Resources Board. One of the major functions of the State Planning Council and the Division Planning is to maintain the State Guide Plan. The State Guide Plan is a means for centralizing, integrating, and monitoring long-range goals, policy plans, and implementation activities for the state of Rhode Island. It is an all-encompassing document right now of 22 volumes. It forms the basis for state review of local comprehensive plans, which is mandated by state law. Actions of all state agencies, including the Economic Development Corporation, are required by state law to be consistent with the state guide plan. The plan includes functional elements dealing with topics such as energy supply and demand, transportation, housing, economic development, and land use. Currently underway are revisions of the state's energy plan and the solid waste plan for resource recovery. The most significant new plan adoption in the last several years has been the state's land use plan, Land Use 2025. Land Use 2025 provides us with the backdrop for this entire effort. We want to, in this effort, build on our strengths. And let me just talk about a few of what those are. Rhode Island, we are very fortunate to have a relatively compact um, development pattern in the, in the state. We have a vibrant capital city. Urban areas outside of Providence that are unique and different and don't look like every place else. I'm referring to places like Bristol and Westerly and Whitford, Newport. Our spectacular coastline, 400 miles. Our farms and open spaces. The distinction we have between our developed environment and the rural environment, mostly located in the southern and western parts of the state. Our strategic location, uh, close to Boston, not too far from New York City, and also our institutions of higher learning. So let's talk a little bit about where we are in the state. And hopefully you'll be able to see on the colors of this map, it looks a little light, but let me just take a few minutes to explain it. This is Rhode Island uh, as it exists today. The pink areas indicate the areas of the state that are urbanized. Uh, as you can see, Rhode Island is heavily developed along its coastline. That was the state's uh, primary uh, transportation and economic network. We also developed in the 1800s along our rivers uh, because of water power uh, and the Industrial Revolution. So our development pattern in Rhode Island is still pretty much geared to Narragansett Bay and the rivers that flow into it. The trend in the last 40 years in the state has been to expand outward from those historic urban cores. And what we have seen is a movement of population further and further out at lower and lower densities. 
this is what we think the state will look like if we keep going in the same direction we've been going in the last 40 years. As you can see, the pink area is spreading further and further out into the state, removing those uh, areas of open space agriculture that we uh, value so much in Rhode Island. This is a future that we think is not a desirable one for Rhode Island. So Land Use 2025, which was adopted in 2006, presented a vision for the state of focusing on our urban areas. The pink areas, the darker pink indicates those areas of the state that have sewer, lighter pink just have public water, um, where we have already concentrated our infrastructure and development. We think we need to further concentrate development in those areas and protect as much of the rest of the state as we can. Uh, to conserve those open spaces and agricultural areas, the dark green areas on the map are those pieces of land that are publicly protected. The middle green color um, is those areas that are required to be protected to maintain water quality, both in the Situ Reservoir and areas in the southern part of the state that are dependent on groundwater. The light green color are uh, those areas that are neither publicly protected nor related to water supply needs. The stars on the map indicate those areas of the state partially within the urban areas and sometimes without, outside of the urban areas where communities have indicated that they would like to see future growth take place. One of the important elements that we need to think of as we constantly move forward is excellence in community design. As you know, community design is a matter of local government concern, not so much of state concern, but we hopefully will be able to improve that. So how do we get there? Land Use 2025 established an urban services boundary. That's the dark red line around the pink. That's the area of the state that we are trying to concentrate development in. We are, through our office, trying to direct the funds that we have purview over into those areas. That can include such areas as community development block grant funds, economic development administration funds, transportation funds, which is a major um, source of our revenue, and also the ho recent housing bond funds. So we have done, as we review those applications, we look to try to direct that, those funds and those projects into those urbanized areas of the state. We have a challenge grant program under data and ta technical assistance. We provide funding for local governments to pursue initiatives of their own that we feel are supportive of state goals. A couple of examples of these recently have been the Exeter Village Center development, uh, which has just been adopted by the town council. And we're also funding the city of Warwick as they work to uh, develop guidelines for the Warwick Station District at the end of the MBTA line. Rhode Island, as I mentioned before, has mandatory local comprehensive planning. And as we review those local comprehensive plans, we ensure that they are consistent with the state's overall land use plan, land use 2025. So why are we pursuing HUD funding? Um, First of all, the state's economic development plan is very much out of date. There are actually two economic development plans in the state, one about economic development in general, the other about industrial land use. They both date from the year 2000. Obviously, things have changed a lot in Rhode Island since 2000. We have two state housing plans as well. Those are not as out of date. They're six years old, but they still need to be updated. And we know that our cities and towns uh, need assistance in helping them to identify growth centers consistent with their own comprehensive plans. The Sustainable Communities Regional Planning Grant was a nationally competitive grant. Uh, we were one of a relatively few um, states in the whole country that received this funding. We have received or will receive $1.9 million from HUD over a three year period of time. That is also being matched with around 400,000 of local funds and the ultimate product of this will be the Regional Plan for Sustainable Development. Now for this to succeed, we have to look at the various elements which are shown in the circles, transportation, water, land use, economic development, and housing, not as separate elements, but as issues that relate to each other. We have to break down those silos. And traditionally, here and elsewhere, there's been a tendency to look at individual elements in an individual basis without fully considering how they relate to other development activities. That's what we are trying to break down in this effort, a synthesis of these complex elements, these five in particular, into an overall plan of development. 
So these are the major elements which I'll talk about in some detail as we move forward. Economic development, housing, growth centers, technical assistance to cities and towns and also to state government and others, public participation, social equity, performance measures, how we are going to review how we are doing once this plan is done, and the overall implementation plan. So let's talk about a few of these in some greater detail. Economic development. Economic development is obviously a major issue in this state. We have one of the country's highest unemployment rates. We seem to hit uh, economic downturns early. We hit them deeper, and we seem to last longer in them than other parts of the country and even our neighbors within the region. So we need to look at how Rhode Island can build upon its assets. And Rhode Island has a lot of assets to build upon. What can we do to promote economic success in the regional, national, and international context. How do we compare with our, particularly with our neighboring states of Massachusetts and Connecticut, and most particularly Massachusetts, since we are much closer to the Boston area? What are we trying to achieve in our state's economy? And what are the best fits for us? Where can we put our effort into things that take the best advantage of our strengths? So the goal is to develop a single economic development plan with long-range strategies for Rhode Island. Not to look for one-off deals for one hot co company or another hot, co hot company, but to really look at a strategy connected to the other elements of how we, work, how we move forward. To develop a framework for decisions on future investments. I mentioned some of these before, but the Economic Development Corporation and other entities have other funds that need to be part of this effort as well. Now, as part of this overall economic development plan, we have actually uh, issued a, a request for proposals, which is, and have received the results of those uh, proposals. That work is currently underway of an expedited data gathering on economic development related uh, issues. And we will have that information by February of 2013. We pulled elements out of the overall request for proposals, which I'll talk about in a second, because economic development right now is so important to the state. And in that, we will be drilling down into such issues as our overall business climate ratings, which receive a lot of attention, regional comparisons of those, existing and emerging clusters in Rhode Island. Where do we have economic activity that also relates to other economic, economic activities in the state? Uh, we'll be working very closely with the Economic Development Corporation and the Governor's Workforce Board. Our regulatory environment that seems to get a lot of attention. What is it about the state's regulatory environment, both at the state and local levels, that presents roadblocks and disincentives to businesses? How are those better or worse than what is experienced in our neighboring states? And also private capital. How, what kind of success do we have in attracting private capital into Rhode Island, what are the gaps? Where, where could public entities potentially fill those gaps? And lastly, how best to market our assets? What is the best sort of strategy for the state to look at what it has, what it has to offer, and how best to market those? So hopefully this will position the state, just this, just this analysis of the existing conditions, where we are, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. How, the, how that positions the state for the future funding of economic development administration funds, which are federal, and also how that will relate to the overall planning effort, which I'll now get into in greater detail with. State housing plan. The state housing plan, an important part of this initiative, uh, encompasses all of our down housing needs. Traditionally, we've been more focused on subsidized housing uh, for help communities meet their 10% to targets, but we also have to look at market rate housing, where housing is being built, where we want it to be built, at what densities, where it may be inappropriate to build housing. Uh, this would be the consolidation of two existing plans and hopefully develop a much stronger connection between housing and economic development. I mentioned growth centers in the past, uh, earlier in this presentation. One of the things we're trying to do is to map all of Rhode Island's uh, assets, our natural, cultural, economic, and infrastructure assets. We want to look at the whole state and look at what parts of the state do we desire growth to take place and where 
other assets that need to be protected that should not be developed. So we're looking at it from two perspectives, what we're trying to preserve and where we feel development should take place at greater densities to help municipalities better plan for their own futures. Social equity is an, a huge part of this grant effort, very important to HUD and to us. Traditionally, in Rhode Island and elsewhere, low-income minority populations have not been tremendously engaged in planning efforts. We are determined to do better than we have done in the past. We have established a social equity advisory committee. We're still looking for representation in that committee. Uh, so I would welcome any suggestions that people have. Um, we are going to exceed the normal protocol of public hearings and meetings and workshops to reach out to disadvantaged populations to make sure that they are a part of this effort in a very meaningful way. Implementation. Typically when planning effort is done, the end of the plan has a series of tasks and challenges that uh, departments and individuals are supposed to do. But they tend to be very lengthy and detailed and not necessarily well coordinated with each other. If we succeed in this effort, we are going to have to have a very manageable set of goals and strategies, cross-cutting between the various elements that truly give us a roadmap of where we are trying to go in the future. It can't be all things. If all things are priority, then we have no priorities. We will, we're going to have to, once we're done with this entire effort, really look at where our, where our staff efforts and beyond us can be best placed in order to make this work out. So the executive summary of this project will be the Regional Plan for Sustainable Development. A little bit about the schedule. Um, we were notified of our success in this grant application in late 2011, but our project starting date was February 15th of 2012. It is a three-year effort, which will end on February 15th, 2015. In November 2012, we, re we released a request for proposals to, for, to hire a consultant help to help us in, this, in these uh, tasks. Those are due uh, in January. In year two, which will start in this year, 2013, that will be the major year for the development of the plans, the public participation and capacity building that I've referred to earlier. Year th three will be the requirements that we have through Administrative Procedures Act for the plan adoption through the State Planning Council and also to begin the actual work at the local level on capacity building and implementation. So a three-year effort, we are just beginning year two. This will be a very important year for us. I hope this has given you some background into what the Division of Planning is trying to accomplish with the Regional Plan for Sustainable Development. We have a great staff working on this project, but in order for us to truly succeed, we need your assistance as well, your opinions and your guidance. I want to personally thank the governor for his great interest in this project, and I know he will be looking forward to our progress as we proceed in the months ahead. I hope that you'll be hearing a lot more about this work in the months to come as we pump up our outreach efforts. But in the meantime, if you have questions and comments, Melanie Army and I look forward to hearing from you. You have our information on the slide. Thank you for your attention.